welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have everybody here once again. I hate to be the, the glimmer of bad news, that black cloud that comes right over here and ruins your day. However, I'd like to officially uh, put an end to the Red Boston Red Sox for the 2021 season. I'm throwing the towel in. They're done. They're done. They just got swept by the Yankees. I'm disgusted. I'm embarrassed to be a Red Sox fan. I really, I'm embarrassed how insufferable this team is right now. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, the Patriots host their second preseason game this time against the Eagles. That will be played uh, this Thursday night. Um, I know basketball summer league, Phil will come in and talk a little bit more about all that jazz going on. Um, and then there's really nothing, nothing of note for hockey outside of Chris Kelly is named the assistant coach for the Boston Bruins for this upcoming season. So you get, one of the guys who won a cup in 2011 back behind the bench. Um, the other guy is, uh, is it Adam McQuaid? Adam McQuaid is another name that's a part of this coaching staff. So that's a good thing there. So as we always have with us, when we do our programs, we have Phil Haley and Tom Smith in house. Anything you'd like to interject before we dive on in? Well, no, not really, but I, I will say that I do actually have something to talk about for, uh, basketball when we get really? to it Is yeah the same tom smith that we know no. uh tom you were a witness for the red sox last friday night correct when they played the orioles that is correct yep what did you witness uh i witnessed a lot of good at bats um decent pitching i mean it was it was average compared to what it was earlier in the season but you know still got the job done we only it was the orioles they only gave up one run so you know nothing nothing impressive but you know it was also the ball uh, the baltimore orioles and a lot of fans the positive people in this world i'm a positive person but i'm also a realist i tell you how it is face the facts oh they're playing the orioles here they come everything's great again this team is back on track. Woohoo! Right before the Yankee series starts. Folks, it's the Baltimore Orioles. Take a freaking chill pill. You overhyped it. I don't care if they beat them 22 to whatever the heck it was. To say the team was back is a disgrace. They are sleepy. They are lacking any effort they don't care they don't want to play baseball anymore they're giving the finger to management because they didn't go and get anybody to help this team and i'm pretty outraged about it because even if your general manager didn't get you any help wouldn't you want to prove to him that a guess what we can actually do it without any reinforcements coming back in so J.D. Martinez, classic example, I'm calling you out. I'm calling Christian Vasquez out. I'm calling Devers out. I'm calling Bogarts out. Kiki, the whole freaking team. Not up or go home. It's choice. And right now, they packed it in, and the offseason has already started clicking in. So what happens from here? Only we'll find out. But right now, when it comes to good competition in teams, they're tanking, and they're just not anywhere close to being where they are. On a positive note, Chris Sale did come back, pitched against the Orioles. But he's back. You know, his first first start since 2019. Did a great job. That should be a, that should be a spark. That should be a spark. It should be a motivator. We'll see what happens on it. But as far as I'm concerned right now, from what I see, I'm throwing the towel in. I don't see this team even making the playoffs. I don't think this team has it. I think this team is done. There's no fire. There's no spark. Unless something happens and it ignites them again, I think they gr they grossly overachieved, uh, very much so in the first half. They are uh, 14 and 17 in the second half that right now. Good Despicable. Team right Good team. Um, let's go over to if Phil's ready. Uh, I'm not sure if he's he's back. I want to do uh, go to basketball next. There he is. 
Let's go to summer league hoops. So Tom first had something to say, which is to my surprise uh, self. Yeah, hey, I've been I've been watching a little more a uh, little more sports lately. Yep. No, oh, really? really? Fan of not really, you know, just the news stuff, uh, at, such as uh, Joel, Joel Embiid signing that big deal of his that he actually did on his own. Are you reading off a sheet? It's okay no. if you are. I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I, I was watching Sports Center the other day, so that's I, you know, that was one of the big topics of the day. Yeah. Um, it was actually the day that he signed the deal. So it was like four years, one hundred ninety-six million, which oh, yeah, is yeah. a Ridiculous, ridiculous amount of money for four <laughs> years. He is. Um, I mean, I would you think he's worth it at all? That's my question. I mean, I think he's a good player, but you know, as a Celtics fan, I also think he's a dirty player. Oh, you think he's dirty? A, a little bit. You know, he throws elbows a little bit. Um, yeah, I think they all. I think they all do. But I think he's more. I think he's like like a like Marcus Smart type of guy. Well, I think he's a for I, better I or worse. I think. Uh, Philly was smart to resign him or extend or extend his contract. Um, yeah, but the other big topic of that whole conversation was what they're going to do with Ben Simmons. Which, which I don't know if you've heard. I have the, the Timberwolves have some uh, interest in him, so that's something, and that's kind of like, oh, let's see what they get, you know, what they can do with that. But you know, I I don't know. Yeah, Ben Simmons is another weirdo who who knows where he fits. Who knows. Uh, but what else you got, Tom? Um, now I'm I'm interested in your your basketball. Well, that's about it. But you know, oh, um, I know that Marcus Smart's on the I forget now. But yeah, I know he signed, he's a, signed his extension. That they was one signed of the four years. Yeah, wanted to talk about and uh, yeah, and then and Kemba too. Kemba went somewhere. He's no longer on the Celtics, but we, I think he, we already knew that. He did, but it was kind of like he was. Kevin Fournier on the Knicks. yeah on the Knicks on the Knicks, and actually Fournier getting kind uh, I guess technically signed and traded. A sign and trade, yeah. Yeah, so they keep their mid level exemption. So we uh, can clause. keep Marcus Smart here for another four years. Uh, well, no, that actually, yeah, well, that mid level doesn't have isn't necessarily have to do with the Marcus Smart I deal. Uh, but Marcus will be here, yeah. But who knows if that's a sign and trade there? That's kind of the thing too. Who knows? Uh, yeah, it's an upside down frown or just another like flesh must mustache kind of thing. The finger sash. But no, uh, yeah, four years, I think it's 77 million. And I think that takes up like one of the max slots, not the mega max, which it's all not, it's just all kind of silly names and kind of weird stuff. So uh, yeah, and they, they maintain the mid-level exemption. Uh, but I don't know, they... Uh, I was talking to a buddy the other day about like them getting rid of Moses Brown to get Josh Richardson, who was the other, is a backup to Trey Young uh, and Atlanta. And once again, you know, uh, signing Schroeder is another indication like they really love former Atlanta <laughs> Hawk guards. Sorry, and, I was just giving, I was just no, giving Mark right. and Smart the finger. It's all good. That's all right. The number one. Yeah, I hear you. Number one, give him the number one. Yeah. Uh, and they were, I guess they were talking about putting him at point guard too at some point. Yeah. Yeah. No, that because it's right true. I mean, but honestly, I would say put Naismith at that shooting guard in the starting, have uh, Schroeder there, uh, Brown, uh, Tatum, and uh, either Can or whomever. I mean, I don't know who you put at center and maybe Time Lord. And then just. Or maybe Cantor, then Time Lord, and then have Marcus Smart like run the second unit, and then go back and forth, like in the you know in the last five minutes of a game, because he's actually pretty good down the stretch. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, until the summer league stuff, yeah, they were in the championship game against the Kings. They got smoked, but uh, you know they made it there, and they have a you know. But that usually tells you nothing. I'm not gonna say oh, I shouldn't say that. It, it not that it tells you nothing, but it's like preseason football. Yeah, uh, isn't like summer league just like? I mean, I, I don't I don't watch baseball at all. So I mean, basketball. So you know, my opinion doesn't. No, I mean, isn't really uh, all that spectacular with it. But like, I was gonna say, isn't summer league just kind of pointless? Not necessarily pointless, but well, it, you it get is. To see, you get to. See I know like what the, you're saying. You get to see the. Um, you get to see like some rookies. Farm, farm system. The farm grow. system. 
Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. I mean, but who knows how that translates? And sometimes you have like first, sometimes you have like second or third year players there, or even players you just get from like the Euro, uh, European leagues. Yeah. I know there's this uh, Israeli uh, kid we signed two years ago, uh, I believe. Uh, I think it was in the, oh, well, maybe, or it might have been uh, the year before, it might have been 2020 when we drafted him with Naismith and Pritchard. And uh, I, I think he spent the year in like uh, either Euro League or uh, Israeli League. I think he played pretty well the summer league but uh, it's kind of i don't know it's always fun to see for me someone who likes basketball quite a bit it's always fun to see that stuff and see where you know like i said preseason football you're able to see these people who might pop a little and you don't know how well they'll fit amongst you know in the league league but you know we, I, I think we'll see we'll see where it goes and uh Lubix, i, I you know, also they the goal, like, so. i also feel like summer league is kind of just easier than the regular season yeah, you don't have all the – I mean, for myriad of reasons, man. Maybe scrub the players – huh? Yes, yeah, scrub-ish. But pre, preseason. Preseason is the best, like, you have some stars-ish that came, when you know. Taco like gets his championships. So. Uh, well, I mean, they, they failed to do that. They failed to get one for Taco. <laughs> but he could have brought one home. But he was a guy, too, who they released, and I think they signed him back. Actually, I don't know officially if they signed him back. But they released him of that. But, yeah, there's – um. so that's what's going on with the seeds. Who knows – if there are any other weird moves happening, probably not. If I were to be, I don't think there is. No, is I'm say. actually surprised Brad Stevens is still here. Eh, yeah, I guess. I, I mean, you think they would try to trade him to get? I am. My facial expression should say it all. I'm, sh- I'm shocked. Yeah, <laughs> I'm shocked. Well, there you go. Oh God, where's he gonna go? That th- I think he's going back to college. Personally, I think he is. I don't know Probably. when it's going to happen, but I still think this GM thing is a temporary thing until whatever team comes and signs them, then the Celtics are off the hook for whatever they got to owe Stevens. Because they couldn't – remember back of this whole thing when the, the – uh, Yeah, he's still, he's still under contract. He's still under contract. contract. Yeah. You got to pay him for something. So it's, it's like throwing out millions of dollars for nothing. It's like, here you go, Brad. You're going to be this. We're going to, yeah. you know – put you in a higher role to give you more importance, but really it's get the hell out of here in a way. And I wish they did the same. I, I, I've been keeping this in a little bit. I, I wish they did the same to market smart. I mean, come on guys. I, I know he's, I know he's. Uh, he was your guy. Sometimes the, the, the spark of the team on occasion, but 77 million for four years out of our freaking minds. Yeah. Everyone's out of their minds. Oh, it's ridiculous. This yeah. money that gets thrown for a, Dribbling a freaking basketball. Well, dribbling and occasionally layuping, it's occasionally ludicrous. rebounding. Yeah, of course. Like all of professional sports is oh, a joke is regarding sick. money. But, you know, oh, that's what you do. sleep sometimes at night. Us, us hard I mean, it shouldn't. I mean, it shouldn't. Because we have no, there's hard no, hard. nothing we could really, do we could program. revolt about it. We could revolt Nick's trying, Nick's try to, trying to avoid throwing up in the trash barrel right next to him on the well, floor. I actually there. moved my <laughs> yeah. trash barrel back to the. It would be good for TV if you did. And I'm regretting the move right now. <laughs> regretting it, but boy, I I'm sorry. I just do not see a championship in the Celtics' horizon anytime soon. Yeah, I don't. I, I think mean, you're talking like a couple years of building something, and I, I think, just feel like you know. Everything of our 18 championships and stuff. It, we're okay that we only won in 2008. I mean, we're going on what now? 12, almost 80 years, years. 80 years since our last one. 80 years, yeah. 80 years, yeah, huh? 80 years. <laughs> Feels like well, 70, years. 78, 78. I'm not going to round up. I'm not going to do that. Uh, no, it, I, no, you're right. I, I'd like to be wrong. I love it when I'm wrong. I'm not wrong a lot. No, but I think when I'm wrong, I mean, it's, it's 13 myself. years, but it feels like 80, you know? Pretty much. It kind of, it weird. Well, it's weird. It's such an odd thing. It feels like the other day to me. one in 2010, I have. But, uh, I yeah, mean, no, they, they had a good chance. Yeah. It's been three years for the Sox, and it feels like five, so, you know. <laughs> I, I think COVID exactly. has done that to everybody. Which but team I also do you think, guys think is the closest to winning a championship right now? Probably the Patriots or the Red Sox, if I'm going to be honest. Man, yeah. I mean, I guess the Bru- I mean, I shouldn't discount the Bruins, but I think they might. I, honestly I, think, Phil, I think they're going the other Phil, way. I put the so- I put the socks in the patch before the Bruins. Yeah. I, I I I don't see a championship coming soon, folks. I don't. I don't have any. 
I, no, I, got, I, I was saying about the other day. Moved down there. to Florida. Pouring rain today. That, that's where the champion. Debbie Downer. Oh, Debbie Downer. <laughs> well, I know, but listen. I but also we're we're so we're so lucky in the sense like for the last twenty years we are able to like are six you calling super me a spoiled, rotten, entitled Boston sports fan. Yeah, of course. Good. But uh, no, I thought that was insinuated. Uh, no, I, but I was thinking about this too, like how we're all kind of like, oh, you know, whatever, you know, the Sox or what are they doing? The Seeds, what are you doing? It's like, well, and I think with the Seeds and the Bruins, you can make an argument for like, like they they should be have more of a fire under their 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 backside. But uh, I don't think you we can't we shouldn't really give too much cuff to the Patriots or the Red Sox because. I mean, how many you have like how many championships in like fifteen years? Like it's four. We're, we're spoiled. Yeah. We're spoiled. No, we, but but that's I what look we like do. An, I look like an imbecile saying that. Oh, I, I haven't seen a championship and blah 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 blah. What's the last? Since two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, wrong. <laughs> yeah. Another one. Well, so, no, but that but those are your boys. The Red Sox are your. That's your team. That's your thing. And for me, the C's like yeah, it's been. I'll take I'll take what I have so far. I was actually able to be like conscious enough to see a, a championship. Cause I didn't like 1986. I was like, when they won in 80, 86, I was, I think it's the 86, 87 season, I think, or maybe it's 85, 86, I forget, but I wasn't I was like three or four. So I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't actively watching stuff. So the first one, the only one I really saw of the Celtic championship was 2008 and almost like you said, and I agree, they should have won in 2010, but it was a great series. It what just didn't end series? up. Didn't end up the way we wanted it. Five minutes away from victory, too. Yeah, man. And I still remember. Ten, minutes up, ten, ten points up. We were up eh, in ten the ten. first. We were up ten yeah. points in the first. I mean, it was more content. Fourth, like, that's quarter, a- fourth quarter, I want to say, with five minutes to go, we had a ten-point lead. I don't. I Honestly, I don't remember it being a ten-point lead in the fourth. I remember it being. And I've cried uh, my sorrows away ever since. Well, yeah. I, uh, Ray Allen had a runner in the in the paint. <laughs> That just kind of clanked. Oh. It kind of went in and clanked. I remember that, but I don't know. That's a whole other. Miami and gets his other one. So he, uh, that is a whole. Listen, I went down a rabbit that hole of Kevin Garnett and all that stuff, and I don't know if they. I don't think they ever patched it up. So sorry to turn into that. I actually, because we really don't have any. I mean, we have the Patriots with their preseason yeah. stuff, but again, it's preseason. I really don't care. But I don't, well, what did you? Want, I do want to ask you guys this question because this kind of just brought something clicking into my mind, which I think is pretty cool. Who is your number one villain for each sports Boston sports team? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, a good one. I don't know. I'm in a villain kind of mo- uh, mood today. Oh, sorry. Right the little guy's yelling. Hi. Hi. So if you think, anybody- let's go Red Sox first. If you think villain, if you think of a villain and you think maybe somebody was here or went to some other team and stuff, who do you, who do you think of? What's his name from, uh, you just say the Astros, but uh maybe that's too much i know what's his name who uh what's his name oh sorry boy hi boy uh babe, oh, I, babe ruth babe ruth babe yeah ruth. Oh, that's not a bad one that was one of the worst i mean that's probably the worst trade in history i mean but but like villain you, know, you could you could put johnny damon's name in that i'd even say nomar uh i know you weren't really see, a fan i, of I still the follow end, but... nomar a lot i See, yeah. if Nomar went to the Yankees, I would say the same. Johnny Damon going to the Yankees, winning a ring and everything with them at that point. Yeah, I I, I can't look at him the, the same way. Wade Boggs, I mean, he went to the Yankees, and he won a championship with them, rode the horse across Yankee Stadium and everything. That's another great example of it. Um, Bruins. I mean, I know Alex, for a lot of people. I mean, I know I'll for a say lot of Alex people. Ovechkin, big time. He's never been a Bruin, but. I know for I, a lot of people it was uh it was uh Ray Bork. You put Back Bork in. as a villain? But he because no, he went I'm to not, Colorado. No, I'm not saying for me personally, I'm saying for a lot of other people. They they were all like I so think mad people were him. happy for him going and getting a yeah. couple I mean I was, had a parade. But I know there were, I know there were people that were, you know, not happy about it, him getting traded and to the other team and winning so a we, championship there. Are we talking but, about a villain like throughout time or are we talking like contemporary? I mean, it could have been throughout time. It didn't even have to be associated with the team. It just could yeah, be yeah. an enemy. John Henry, then? That's why I, I look at I look at Ovechkin. Um, all, at the, Ovechkin. all the Montreal Canadian players, like every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. 
All Toronto. Max uh, Pacioretty. I could put him up on that list. Oh, absolutely. Who was the one that knocked out um, what's it, Mark Oh, Matt Cook. Matt Cook is a Matt huge. Oh, yeah. From Matt the Cook the is a huge. Denver, how about right? the jock wagon nope. from the yeah. Capitals? What's his name? Uh, Wilson. Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson. Want to take a wrench and strangle? Him. No, I can't say that on this no. show. It's family. <laughs> we don't need. It's all right. Well, out. we we can talk about strangulation. We'll sit down. We don't, face we the don't facts. need to do any of that. Sort yeah. of thing. Face the facts. Yeah. Your windpipes we'll are getting we'll crushed. Stand up, gentlemen. That's all I'm going to say. Well, sit down and get violent. That's what yeah. I say. Um, who's the other? Oh, um, South well, South. I mean, I I I, I never really. Kyrie. <laughs> I, Kyrie I is a great Kobe contemporary. I always liked him. I didn't see anything. I never had that kind of thing with Kobe. I kind of had respect for him, uh, uh, Derek Jeter. O- yeah. Obviously, for me, I look at more of Kyrie, of course, LeBron, insufferable DBs. Hmm. DBs. Yeah, I think you. Yeah. I think I put LeBron before Kobe, even though I have a be- like. I think LeBron is a great villain, as far as like that. Everyone wants to see him fail in that He's regard. Insufferable boob. Uh, yeah, I don't, sometimes, but I, I, he's one of the best, obviously, but Kobe, I agree with you, despite the allegations, uh, I think just as a player, he wasn't as crazy. I think if you were a Portland trailblazer or a Sacramento Kings fan, you might think differently, but he wasn't as much of a, like a heel that I think uh, LeBron is because LeBron don't, LeBron's like a one man army too, yeah. in, in a lot of ways, but, uh, not to say Kobe, you know, wasn't, you know, he, I mean, he won six. But uh, yeah, he. But like, he's a respected player. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think LeBron is a little too. But I mean, yeah, anyone for the Lakers, I would say, like from long time. I think Wilt the Stilt is one of those guys. Wilt Chamberlain, you throw out there. I'd even throw out Bill Lambeer, as much it's as I do. Oh, great. that call um way back in time with uh Johnny Johnny Most right. Johnny Most, yeah, that I, classic call. Look for that. Anything bad about Lambeer, but why he's not? Goody. That raspy oh, it's, voice. Oh, it's it's beautiful. Look for up yeah. on YouTube. Johnny Most, Detroit oh, Pistons. Yeah. Um, and then football related. Was Peyton Manning ever a villain? I don't think uh, so. No, he I was more like a goof. Yeah. I would like Gomer oh, Pyle. Ray Lewis. Here he comes. Here comes Peyton. Um, yeah, Ray Ray Lewis, Darrell Revis, maybe. Um Oh yeah, Rex Ryan, or not even Rex Ryan, but Bill Parcells even. Bill Parcells. As much I as put Rex Ryan into that. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. He was fun. He was a fun. Guy. Oh, I, I like him now. Is there a... any other real rival that comes in that we Patriots fans just can't stand? Well, I mean, you have Tom like... Brady a villain now. Uh, that's I mean, a good question. That's a good question, actually. I guess we'll see after week four. I'm very curious to see what happens with the crowd. I'm very curious to see it. I think it'll be 50-50. I think it's going to be more rooting for Brady than the Patriots. If I want to put my betting hat on and I'm not a better. But I have a funny feeling that people are more interested in Tom Brady beating the Patriots than the Patriots actually winning that game. And I think Brady is going to win that game. I, I, I don't. I don't know about the, the crowd part. Well, let's I, be honest here. If it's Cam Newton as your quarterback, that's a dead giveaway. You know exactly what's going to oh, happen. Well, yeah. If it's Mac Jones, it might be a little 50-50 right there. Uh, honestly, I think if it's Jones, I think it would be 60-40 in favor of the Patriots. I could see that because I think people um, are high on this guy. I mean, th- there's a there was a lot of, you know, there's still a lot of talk about how he's been looking in the – and, like, pa- the Patriots are one of two teams where they're not really sure who's uh, going to be the starting quarterback. And the other team was the Saints. Yeah. They don't know. They don't, can't really put a finger on who's going to be the quarterback. I, I will say out of all of my sports and everything and all the sports that we do follow with stuff, my number one villain is absolutely Kyrie Irving. Absolutely. That's a dead giveaway for me. I think that guy just is waiting for a bus to run him over. He really is. He's just waiting for it to happen. Just waiting for it. The flat earth of his is just going to come down and just crumble him right away. That's just my Mine, thing. Mine's going to be Matt Cook. You're Matt. Yeah. I would put is my Cook still here. around? No, no, he isn't. No, no, he's in jail. Yeah. Should be. 
Mark Severin, well, right? I'm glad that we were able yeah, to have Mark this Sibor. kind of whole uh, different kind of spiel of how we do our show traditionally. So again, it's kind of the villains episode. Maybe next week we look at legends that yeah. are uh, some of the more respected players that have been with the team and you look at them as uh, kind of ambassadors or some sort of thing. So we'll do that as this was villains week. Next week will be legends week. We'll talk about who our real legends are for each sports team the next time that we are with you. So final thoughts, anybody, before we head off into the lovely land of the exit button on our Zoom screens. Uh, just yeah, be prepared. the Sox are going to win. <laughs> win what? We'll never know. We'll see. Um, the last thing I want to say, um, this was, um, yesterday was the uh, three-year, um, sadly, the anniversary of my aunt, who I was very close with, who passed away. Um, I'm going to dedicate this show for her and uh, always keep her uh, with me, you know, for life as life continues to go on. So this one's for you. We will see you next time on another episode of uh, Face the Facts. We'll see you next time. Thank you.